Welcome to season one of the Animal Highlight. In this first season of Animal Highlights, we are focusing in on animals that are related to the urban, and it's been extracted from season three of the Animal Tone podcast, which is focused in on animals and the urban. In this highlight, we're going to be talking all about cows and the urban. <laughs> So in this episode, we spoke a fair bit about cows, and I thought, why not bring them a bit more into focus by looking at cows for the animal highlight? Now, in the last animal highlight, we spoke about chickens, and I think for most people, they can understand and appreciate the chickens are fairly small, and them being in the city is perfectly understandable. But for many folks, I think in North America and in Europe in particular, the idea of cows in the city seems a bit strange, absurd even. You know, there might be one or two outliers where they think, oh, but there are cows in Cambridge, the Cambridge Commons, for example. But actually, for many, the idea of a cow walking down the street would seem really odd. And many people will then defer to, I think, Indian cities and say, well, India is a really great example of where cows are in cities. And you're not wrong. There are many, many cows in Indian cities, and there are many cows in a lot of cities, in fact, around the world. But the reason I wanted to focus on cows in this animal highlight is also to draw attention to the fact that even in urban areas where you can't see an animal, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not urban animals, right? So in North American cities, for example, just because there are no cows walking down the streets, it doesn't mean that they aren't in intimate relationship with that urban area. And of course, the most obvious relationship is them being consumed as meat, milk, leather. How's this for a piece of fresh silver side, Mrs. Kane? virtue of them being what Catherine Gillespie calls afterlives is an indicator of them being urban animals, but perhaps not in the the lively way that we've been speaking about urban animals. But this is not to say that there are no urban cow relations either. There are tons of very different urban cow relations. There are the urban cow relations that Yamini spoke about in the episode where we see, you know, cows being revered while at the same time being embroiled and entangled in both dairy and meat industries, where they're found in a variety of different spaces, including on streets and in sanctuaries. But there are also urban relationships with cows in places where you might not expect. So, for example, in Spain, the Pamplona bull run, there are tons of bulls that have to engage in and participate in these runs. And what does this mean for the bulls themselves? It's a historical event. How do they experience running through the streets with crowds of people shouting at them? A new and one that I think is quite interesting as well with the last concept where we spoke about urban metabolism is the floating farm in Rotterdam. So there's a new farm in Rotterdam. Uh, It has 35 cows, and it's all being done in the name of climate change and sustainable development, where the people who have developed these farms say, well, having 35 cows here who produce manure that is then put in the city, and they help us to fertilize the farm so that vegetables can grow. It's a very attractive idea, but I've got to admit it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable because how could this possibly be scaled up? Uh, What does it mean for cows and the way they experience urban life? What are their relationships with their babies? And there are tons of other urban examples, right? The cows being used in protests in Ottawa, where the dairy industry was protesting milk price hikes. And this has happened tons of times, right? Cows are constantly brought into urban areas with their milk poured down streets as symbols for what it means to increase the price of milk. But again, what does this mean for the cows themselves when they are brought into cities, when they're used as these kinds of symbols? All of these examples, to me, point to the fact that cows are urban animals. And this is not even to mention or talk about how historically ubiquitous they were in urban areas. Do yourselves a favor and go and check out some images of the Union stockyards, just to get a sense of how many cows, the kind of, and the Union stockyards here is, is particularly large, but to get a sense of just how many animals, how many cows have historically been in North American cities. And just as a a way of a reminder, many of the things that I speak about in these animal highlights, I try to find some videos to make it a little bit more accessible. And you can find those videos on the Animal Turn YouTube channel. And there's a playlist with season three animal highlights. But I also think that I try to use these highlights not to just raise questions about the theme, which is animals in the urban, but also to think about the animals themselves. 
and to highlight them. That's why it's an animal highlight after all. And cows, despite it being, despite cows being animals that I think everyone around the world knows, many people don't know a lot about cows. Uh, one of the first words that I think English speakers learn is cow. Children love cows, but we don't know a lot about them as animals instead of as commodities. So here are a couple of things to help drive home who cows are and some of the, their cool social, social quirks. So when they're allowed to form their own social bonds, cows like to live in matriarchal herds. They have female leaders and they form very strong social bonds. Cows as mothers are really fantastic moms who love their calves and they have best friends. There's been research that's been done to try and figure out if cows have friendships, which obviously they do. But not only do they have friends, they have best friends. They have cows that they prefer to spend their time with and hang out with. They're extremely curious and social animals. If you've ever had the chance to watch some videos of cows playing with balls, there's one in particular of a cow playing with Pilates ball where she's just, she's running and she's jumping and she's snorting and just clearly happy and wonderful and seeing a cow run and how high they can jump, I mean, it just blows my mind. Something else you might not know is that cows are ancestors. Their ancient ancestors are called aurochs. These were massive animals with huge horns. They tended to weigh well over a ton. And in fact, most cows are supposed to or were naturally meant to have horns. But because of different breeding and that kind of stuff, many cows today are born without horns. And that's called polled or polled cattle. I tend to use the word cow instead of cattle. Uh, this is following the work of Catherine Gillespie because cattle is also uh, tied etymologically to both the concepts of property and capital. So I don't want to think of cows as property and capital, even though these are the structures they live in. So I tend towards using the colloquial word cows instead of cattle. And one final interesting tidbit for you is that there are many, 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 many different breeds of cows. In fact, there are over 1,400 different breeds of cows. Uh, 184 of them are extinct and 490 of them are currently on the endangered or at risk list. So that's because there are a very small handful of cows that have been used and bred again and again to be used in our industries, such as the iconic Holstein with black and white black and white fur. And every time you drink a glass of milk in an urban area or you see a milk advert, chances are that milk has come from a Holstein because Holsteins make up the vast majority of the global dairy herd. And I'm speaking of the upper 90s percentile. So these are just some interesting things to know about cows. I've mentioned Holsteins who are one of the most ubiquitous and widespread cows around the world. How about mentioning a cow that many people might not have known about, and that's called the Ancole, A-N-K-O-L-E. I absolutely love this cow. Beautiful, massive horns, just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they come from, or you can find them in Uganda. Definitely check out some pictures of Ancole. They are just absolutely beautiful. So the next time you think about a cow, I wouldn't think of them as being simple animals. They've got extremely long histories dating back to at least 15,000 years. There are, there are hundreds of different types of breeds, thousands of different types of stories, and many, 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 many urban relationships for us to understand. Huge thank you to Animals and Philosophy, Politics, Law and Ethics for sponsoring the Animal Turn podcast where these highlights were taken from. And another massive thank you to Christian Mentz for editing this episode. Thank you also goes to Rebecca Shen for designing the Animal Highlight logo and episode artwork. This is the Animal Highlight with me, Claudia Hurtenfelder.